Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the Koenigsegg Jesko Absolute, which is the fastest car Koenigsegg has ever made. Once it actually comes out, it may be the fastest road going car out there. And Koenigsegg says they are done chasing speed records after this car. So it will be the fastest car they ever make. Now, some of you are already angry because I said Jesko and not Yesko. Here's the thing, my Swedish isn't great. If yours is, that's awesome. You can call me Jason. My name's Jason, none of it matters. Now, in various YouTube videos, Christian von Koenigsegg has been pretty hesitant about saying just how fast this car can go. And he instead says, do the math. Well, lucky for you guys, I have a calculator. So in this video, that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to talk about is how much power does this thing make? Now there are two versions of the Koenigsegg Jesko and they both have the same powertrain, a five liter twin turbocharged V8, which when running on E85 fuel with 2.2 bar of boost pressure makes 1600 horsepower and revs all the way to 8,500 RPM. Now this engine makes 1500 Newton meters or about 1100 pound feet of torque at 5100 RPM. So it is quite a potent engine and that torque is sent through the light speed transmission This is a super cool seven clutch transmission. It doesn't have a flywheel You should check out my video on that if you haven't yet already It's a very cool transmission that they use for this vehicle and then sends the power from that transmission uh, Out to the two rear wheels now the total weight of the Jesko absolute is about 30 kilograms less than the Jesko at 1390 kilograms so compared Compared to the track focus Jesko, it appears fairly similar, but there are quite a few aerodynamic changes in order to reduce the drag coefficient. This includes removing the rear wing, removing the hood ventilation, they've smoothed out the fender louvers, which actually still have holes in them, but with reduced drag, they've removed the front dive planes and winglets, they've altered the front splitter, they've taken out the added downforce from the side vents by straightening the air's flow. They've added dished wheels, which is a removable piece for reducing the rear tire's aerodynamic drag. If I were to guess, they left the front wheels open for brake cooling, and the rear of the body has been reshaped with a sharp cutoff, further reducing drag as well as the overall body length being longer. The ride height has also been slightly lowered, and since it doesn't have as much downforce, it also has a softer suspension. You may wonder why the fins remained on the car. Well, car companies like jet fighters. But not only do these aid with high speed stability, keeping the car straight, but Koenigsegg found they actually reduce drag rather than increase it by redirecting the vortex generated behind the car. The car still needs some downforce for stability, peaking at 150 kilograms, about a tenth of the Jesko's maximum downforce at 1400 kilograms. So what does that all add up to for drag? A drag coefficient of just 0.278. That is absolutely incredible. Now you might say, nah, plenty of cars can do that. Sure, but plenty of cars aren't trying to maintain stability at 300 miles per hour, nor are they trying to cool a 1600 horsepower engine. For comparison, the Bugatti Chiron, when in its top speed mode, has a drag coefficient of 0.36, almost 30% higher. All right, so let's see if we can figure out how fast this thing is going to go. So what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out velocity. So how do we figure out velocity? Well, we know that power is equal to force times velocity. Now that alone doesn't tell us all that much. However, we know how much power we have. We have 1600 horsepower. We can calculate our resistive forces. And then after doing that, all we gotta do is plug it in and we can learn what is our velocity. Now, one thing we need to keep in mind is that drivetrains are not perfectly efficient. So we actually have to plug in the drivetrain efficiency of this powertrain. So this isn't the efficiency of the engine. It's how much power once it's leaving the engine actually makes it to the ground. So we're gonna say this number is 90%. This is a rear wheel drive vehicle with rear engine. If you wanna choose a different number, you can choose a different number. I'm gonna go with 90% drivetrain efficiency. So our total power multiplied by our drivetrain efficiency is going to be equal to the sum of our resistive forces. So we have the force of aerodynamic drag, plus we need to add the force of rolling resistance. And then all of that is going to be multiplied by velocity. So we can set this equal to the force of aerodynamic drag is equal to one half air's density multiplied by velocity squared multiplied by our drag coefficient 
multiplied by the frontal area of the vehicle. And all of that, we are then going to add to the coefficient of rolling resistance multiplied by the normal force. And then all of that is multiplied by velocity. So the normal force can be calculated by figuring out how much force is the car actually pressing down on the ground. So this is going to be equal to the mass of the car plus the amount of downforce that it produces, which Koenigsegg provides in kilograms. And then we're going to multiply this by gravity to get this in units of Newtons. So now we can start filling out the numbers. So we know we have 1600 horsepower. We multiply that by 90% and that gives us 1440 horsepower. However, we want this in units of watts. So 1440 horsepower is equal to 1,073,808 watts. We set that equal to one half air's density. We're going to use 1.225 kilogram per meter cubed. That's at sea level with 15 degrees Celsius. We're going to multiply that by our velocity squared, multiplying that by our drag coefficient of this vehicle, which again is that impressive 0.278. We're multiplying that by the frontal area of the vehicle, 1.88 meters squared. And then we're going to add to that the coefficient of rolling resistance. We're going to use 0.015. This is the number I always go with. You can choose to use a slightly different number if you want. Again, this number does increase as the vehicle starts to move faster. So it could be slightly higher. This is what I always use in my video. So that's what we're going to go with. 0.015 multiplied by our mass of the Jesco Absolute, which is 1390 kilograms, plus the downforce, which they say the max downforce is 150 kilograms, multiplying that by gravity, 9.81. And then we're going to multiply this entire section here by our velocity. So what happens when we solve for V? Drum roll, please, velocity equals 148 meters per second. Now that probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you, so let's convert that 331 miles per hour or 533 kilometers per hour. Boom! That's pretty fast. So how do you know you can trust this number, 533 kilometers per hour? Well, in an interview with Road & Track, Christian von Koenigsegg said, if you run the numbers, you take the frontal area, the CD, the power, the gear ratio, the power curve, the simulation say, 532 kilometers per hour or something like that. 532 kilometers per hour. Uh, so we're off by one kilometer per hour. And here's where you might say, well, Jason, I bet you just chose these numbers. And there's no way that I can convince you that I chose these numbers before I realized he had given this quote to Road and Trek. Uh, but that is the reality of what happens. Perhaps I got really lucky. Perhaps the math was decent. Perhaps a bit of both. Either way, this car is capable of exceeding 500 kilometers per hour. Now, the Bugatti Chiron exceeded 300 miles per hour, so they will have that record forever. However, they did not exceed 500 kilometers per hour. And depending on where you live in the world, I bet one probably means a little bit more than the other. So this is potentially the first car that will be able to cross 500 kilometers per hour. How cool is that? Now, you can say that fairly confidently because compared to the Chiron, the Koenigsegg Jesco Absolute has the same amount of horsepower, but it has better aerodynamics and it has two-wheel drive rather than all-wheel drive, so probably less losses actually getting to the wheels. Now, you might wonder about tires, and that's a completely reasonable thing to wonder about. However, Koenigsegg doesn't seem that worried, and the reason why is because the Jesco Absolute is much kinder to tires than the Agera RS, which is what Koenigsegg did their top speed run in. If you recall, the Agera RS was on stock Michelin Cup 2 tires, and it drove an average speed of up to 278 miles per hour with a peak, which is what the tires actually care about, of 285 miles per hour. So yes, the Jesco is going to drive faster than this, however, it's kinder to the tires. Why? Well, because it has significantly less downforce. So this Jesco Absolute is only producing 40 kilograms of downforce at 250 kilometers per hour versus the Agera RS at 250 kilometers per hour is producing 485 kilograms, over 10 times the downforce. It also weighs five kilograms more. 
So if you were to calculate the power required to overcome rolling resistance, essentially the heat that is going into those tires at 250 kilometers per hour, which yes, is half of you know, what this thing is probably capable of. But if you were to calculate that power, it's going to be 14.6 kilowatts for the Jesco Absolute and 19.2 kilowatts for the Agera RS. So about 31% higher for the Agera RS versus the Jesco, and the Jesco is only driving 16 to 19% faster. Now again, it's going to be traveling at a higher speed, so that is going to incur some of those G-forces uh, into the tires that are going to be significantly higher. Uh, but some of the testing that went into the Agera RS, Koenigsegg said they ran the vehicle, the tires, at 500 kilometers per hour for one minute to see how much deflection there would be, and there was very little, and they said Michelin also ran their own high velocity, high pressure tests on these tires and they were pleased with the results and then once they actually did the top speed run and remember this thing drove 285 miles per hour which is what the tires care about uh, they were super surprised at how well those tires held up to that insane top speed and so they're not worried about tires being able to do it the Jesco is going to be a little bit kinder on the tires although the speed will be higher so that means higher g-forces uh, and Koenigsegg is confident that tires won't be the limiting issue here so it will be very cool if they can actually find a strip of road long enough where they can actually do this. Overall, it's an incredible vehicle. There's going to be 125 of these made, and that's combined between the Jesco and Jesco Absolute. So the split will end up being whatever customers choose. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.